If you wanna make the pictures of you that you put in your thumbnails look good, I'm gonna show you how to take an image that looks like this, where it's dark, you have a lot of things that you maybe would wanna fix up, and it's not that flattering, to looking like this, where it's brighter, the skin tones are more even. I've softened the shadows around my glasses so they're not as big of a distraction. Cleaned up some blemishes and more to make my thumbnails represent me in the best possible way. This process also helps my thumbnails stand out because not everybody knows how to do this. The concepts you're gonna learn in this video, you can apply to pretty much any image editing software, but for this video, I'm gonna be using Photoshop because it's what I'm most familiar with. And hey, really quick, if this is your first time here, my name is Nick. If you wanna learn how to grow your channel, make videos and all types of other YouTube related stuff, start now by subscribing. Now let's hop on the computer. The very first thing that I uh, wanna bring to your attention is just kind of the framing in here anyway. Now keep in mind, all this is gonna get cut out here of the back, so it's just gonna be me, you know, right here like this. But um, one of the things that's important when you're making thumbnails is to make sure that you do have placement of things in a right way. And the reason for this is it makes everything feel balanced. So if you look at what's going on here, my whole thumbnail image is divided into nine different frames. This is based on the rule of thirds. Um, you can find out more information about that on uh, you know, Wikipedia or watch a YouTube video about it. But basically, the whole idea is you divide your screen into nine equal parts, and then you try to put your eyes um, or the main subject in, within these lines somewhere. So you can see my eyes are on this line. I've got a hand in each area here. For the second thumbnail that I'm doing, so you can see here, the hands are just a little bit too far in, but it's okay. I might leave them as they are um, as long as it gets the idea across. And I've got some spacing problems over here. With the eyes, I still have it balanced right here on this particular line. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention because that's also an important part of it. But I'm probably going to roll with this one. Um, but let, first, I'm going to duplicate this and just kind of uh, have that one here in the background so you can just see the difference that is being made once all this is done. But uh, I'm going to turn these guides off here because they are not crucial to what it is that uh, that we're doing right now. And I'm going to go up in Photoshop. You can't see this on my screen because I'm recording this on my widescreen. But if you go up to the top menu and you go up to image and then down to adjustments, you're going to see an option for levels. If I click on that, it's going to bring up a little dialog box or I can move this up down here and here I can click on this little option down here and I can add adjustment layers for different things like uh, you know like hue and saturation vibrance levels and all of that here as well um, me personally just because when I first started learning this I always go up into the top menu for it but for your sake I'll do it here plus with the adjustment layer it makes it non-destructive but with this particular box let me make it bigger here for you what this is doing is this is showing me the light and dark areas of the thumbnail. So if I grab this over here, if you look at the image, you can see how it's making it brighter. So what I wanna do is I wanna take it to where it's bright, but not too bright that it's gonna blow out this edge over here. So I'm gonna keep raising that up a little bit, and then I'm gonna grab the mid-tones, and I'm gonna raise them up. And you can see right out of the gate, it's kind of taken away some of my color, but it's bringing out a lot of the image, right? So it's giving me a lot more to work with. And then once, once that is up, I can come back over to the bright side and then just maybe nudge that up just a smidge. Okay, I'm getting a little carried away, so I'm going to pull that back just a little bit. And then that's that for lightening it up. So the next thing I'll do is I will go into that same area, and then here I'll put it on Vibrance. Now with Vibrance, this is another one where it's really easy to overdo, as you can see right there, but it brings color back into the image and it makes everything look a little bit more natural. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn this up and I'm just gonna eyeball it, you know, until I'm like, yeah, that that looks, you know, pretty good for what it is that I'm trying to do. In this particular case, I think it would be right around in here. So I'm gonna back that off a smidge. I'm gonna bring up general saturation, which does a similar, similar thing. So now we've got my skin tones back. And if we, look at the version that I'm working on compared to the original, you can see already just the huge difference this is making. So now that we have those, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select them all, and then I'm going to duplicate the layers, and I'm just going to smash them by hitting Control E, and then that just combines everything that I did, and then that gives me one, you know, solid image to work on there. Now, just a heads up, as soon as I do that, it becomes destructive, meaning that I can't walk backwards again. So if I did mess something up, then I would need to go back in and then, you know, kind of build everything out again. But it's just the way that I work. So now I'm going to zoom in, and we're going to start getting into the nitty gritty. So if you look at all the little, you know, spots and just like little details and stuff like that on my 
face. Um, I'm going to remove those using a plugin that I have called Portraiter 4. And when this pops up, the name of it is right up here at the top. So what's cool about this is, let me just zoom in here to 100%, is if you look at these lines on my head and just kind of look around everything here, I'm going to take this, take it back to default. You can see when I press, I'm not sure how well this is going to come through with the internet compression, but you can see when I press on this, how it just kind of smooths everything out. It's kind of like putting like a, like a beauty filter of sorts on my skin and it removes all those little tiny details. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to sharpen this a little bit. So it starts to bring in some of those details, but not too much. There we go. And then you can see, especially in areas like this, where it really you know blends things nicely. Now, what's cool when it comes to this is I can also eye drop specific areas. So if I zoom out on this and I say, okay, uh, let's do this area, then you can see here it's selecting my skin tones in this area to, to work with, right? So then that way it ensures that I'm putting this filter on the right areas. Because sometimes, you know, depending on what it is that you're doing, you know, it might end up on another area. Sometimes maybe you run it through a couple times just to make it, you know, look a little bit better. So right out of the gate, what this has done is it's it's taken the image and it's given me a version to where I just don't have as much of that stuff happening um, happening in my head, right? So it just smooths me out there just a little bit. Now we're gonna work on these, um, the, the lines underneath and just some of the other imperfections on my face. So the next thing I'm gonna do here, Turn that bottom layer off. Then I'm going to click on the plus icon here to create an additional layer. Then I'm going to make sure that up here at the top of the screen, that current and below is selected when I select my heel tool. Now on the heel tool, I'm doing the healing brush tool so that I can sample areas. And then with this, what I'm going to do is I'm making this about the size of this mark right here that I'm trying to take off. It's like a freckle. And then I'm just gonna quickly go through and just remove anything that's kind of obvious that takes away from the image or I just don't like, you know, when I'm looking at it. And keep in mind this whole thing, like it looks, you know, a little fuzzy and things like that right now, but this is working on a 4K canvas. So when it's all said and done, then, you know, the it's actually gonna be, you know, about that size. But I'm just working on it big so that I can make sure that I get everything taken care of so that, when I make it small again, um, everything comes out looking nice and good. Then what I'm doing is I'm just, you know, kind of rinsing and repeating, going through, straightening up any lines that look weird using this, and then I just keep working on it until it comes out okay. And then the bonus of this is, let's say that I overdo it like I just did, then I can click on that, and then I can come up to the eraser tool, and then I can just take that area out and kind of do it all again. And then I'm just gonna rinse and repeat that process, going through, taking out anything that's obviously crazy, anything that, uh, that I wanna remove. And we're gonna get to some of the other stuff here in just a minute, but I'm just taking away anything that kind of takes away from the image or it's a distraction, or like I said before, things that I just don't like. Okay, so for this one, um, one of the things I'm getting ready to do here is this spot right here in my mouth. I just don't like how that looks. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Or just go there. Bam. Now it's gone. And in the thumbnail, you won't be able to tell. I got a little hair coming over my lip there. That was a bit much. So I'm going to sample here. Put it right there. Bam. Things that you don't see when it comes to the actual thumbnail itself. It looks like you got a little bit of hair sticking out there. I'll lighten this up a little bit later to make the eyebrows a little bit uh, more even. Then basically just rinsing and repeating this. So it's going to be a long tutorial, so buckle in. I'm sure you saw the timestamp. Take it off some of these things, make it a little bit easier later. And you'll see what I mean by that here in just a second. So some of these lines, right? I'm not trying to look like a like a like I'm completely filtered out, right? I got to have some type of realism in here, um, but I am, you know, just trying to match colors up and that sort of thing here, so that uh, 
Everything just looks a little better. Okay, we're gonna lighten that here. So, so far, you can see all the things that we've pulled away there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this. And I'm just gonna hit E to compress it all. Then, now we're going to go, um, I created another one of those layers, and then I'm now going to go over to the clone tool, and then I also need to make sure that this is current and below. And for this, I'm actually gonna take the opacity down quite a bit, like let's say maybe 17. Sometimes it'll be 10, sometimes it'll be you know 20. It just kind of depends on exactly what I'm trying to do. Um, but in this particular case, I'm going to go in and just kind of lighten up some things. So for this, right, I'm just gonna, I'm sampling up here, and then I'm just using that to lighten up that spot in my nose there just a little bit. And I know you can see the difference when I turn it on and off, but when it comes to the thumbnails, um, these things are things that don't get recognized. Um, I'm going to shrink this down here a little bit. I'm going to lighten this hair up right here. As I'm working on this, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm also going to run this filter again, the portraiture filter, once we get all of this stuff done. And it just gives it like another one off for, you know, just kind of making everything look just a smidge more natural. And I'm gonna have another layer, I'm gonna lighten up this stuff just a little bit. Put my glasses there, still there. We're not totally removing it. That's why I did another layer. So if I end up getting out of control here, I can kind of reel it back in. It's the advantage of, you know, working in the layers there where it's non non-destructive like that, right? So you can really see it take effect when I zoom out. Right? So here, hard shadow, here, it looks more diffused, right? And then I'm gonna rinse and repeat that for my eyes as well. And I'm creating new layers for all of these things so I can, you know, make adjustments if I need to per layer. Here, coming in, matching some color. And I'm gonna lighten up under here a little bit. It's a little bit darker than I like it to be. So I'm doing that with all of this. And another thing too is you can go extreme with this and then just back it off a little bit. So that's another advantage of working in the layers like that and doing it in the non-destructive way. Because, you know, as I build this around, when I zoom out, it's probably gonna be a bit much. But because I'm doing it in layers, I can come in here and I can pull it back you know, a little bit if it's too ridiculous when we zoom out. And I'm going to do that. I'm just making these quick notes on the layer. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Where all we're doing, matching color for skin tone, lightening things up a bit, trying to hide the Circles under my eyes and, you know, all that stuff. I'm just trying to make things blend a little bit better. The light coming in here. I'm going to do a little bit of this right underneath this eye, too. You can see the big difference this has made over here. And again, you know, you gotta be really careful because some of these things, like if you get carried away, then it makes it look fake. And you want it to look good, but not too overly fake. I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna back it off just a little bit so all that's still there. I think left eye is probably okay, but we're just going to zoom out here and just take a quick look. Okay, so we're getting there. Not uh, not perfect yet, but we are definitely getting there. And if we were to do these together, you can just see the difference 
that that makes. And once it's blended in the other tool, it's going to be an even bigger difference. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to keep that and I'm going to build on top of it now that I've kind of backed those off a little bit. For this, I'm going to zoom out just a little, make the brush a little smaller. Working on some of these areas that I might have overlooked because I was zoomed in. Another thing too, when you're doing this, is make sure that your brush is um, as soft as you can make it because you want all of this stuff to just kind of blend together a little bit. There's another tool that I used to use for this too called uh, Rad Labs or Totally Rad, but unfortunately, they don't make that particular tool anymore, which kind of sucks. Um, let's see here. Okay, so we've got that covered. So we can still see light coming in there, light coming in there. So it doesn't look totally unnatural. So then, so far, this is where we're at. Pretty big difference, right? <laughs> Pretty crazy. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take all of these, do that same exact thing where I duplicate, and then I'm just going to crush them together. So I just kind of know where I'm at. Pull this out. And then next, we are going to do the eyes. Now the eyes are fun, because with the eyes, we actually paint them in. So here, what I'm gonna do um, is I duplicated the layer, and then I'm going to mask this layer. Currently, um, you can see everything, and that's perfectly fine, it's what we want. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into the adjustments, and then into the levels again. And here, oops, sorry, I did it on the actual mask and not the image. So adjustments, levels, and then here, bring those eyes up even more. And again, we can tone these down too if we need to later. Okay, and then now I'm going to click on the layer mask and I'm going to go up to the paint bucket, confirm the mask is selected, and then I'm going to paint that off, click on the mask again, and now I have the paintbrush where I can zoom in. And then change this back to white. White means show it, black means do not show it. And then I'm going to paint in my eyes. Another thing you can do before you do this, or you can do it in the process is if you have like lines in your eyes or, you know, like your eyes are bloodshot, you know, something like that, you can also make those adjustments. Like how this is getting a little pink here, I might clone that, I'm not sure. We're gonna see here in just a little bit. Let's just see how this turns out. Now, some content creators will leave the extreme version like this. Sometimes I will too, but I try not to make it, you know, too crazy. So I'll tone it back just a little bit, which it looks like in this case is right around 65%. And if I turn it on and off, you can see how it just brings my eyes to life there. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this again. And then, which you can see also added, you know, a little bit of brightness there um, again. So what I'm going to do, actually, you know what? I'm not, I, let me delete this. And I'll just duplicate this, turn this off, and I will rasterize this. Okay, so now that we've got that, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, another layer here. And I'm going to go to the burn tool. I actually have to do this on the the layer. But I'm going to the, go to the dodge and burn tool. The cool thing with this with these particular tools is they help you bring color back. You can see right there, right? Added the, some color back into my eye. And then when I take the other option and I go to the dodge side, then here, it just creates some like contrast there in my eyes. Right? So then now when we bring it back, you can see how much the eyes stand out compared to, yeah, when it's down there, 
compared to what it was before, right? And I think it's still a bit much. So because of that, I'm going to bring it in, bring them down just a little bit. Because I want nice and bright, but not, you know, not too crazy. So then now I'm going to duplicate this again. Actually, I'm sure that this is, yep. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this again. And I'm going to smash those together. And then now, so far, if I turn off all of these other ones down here, you can see the huge difference that's being made between these two, these two things. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up into my filter and I'm going to go back into that portraiter plugin again. And then I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to run it one more time. And by doing that, I'm going to take the sharpness off because we're going to do that in Photoshop here in a minute. Bump it up just a smidge there. Oh, you know what? I'll have to do it all in Photoshop. But you can see here, now we've got more smoothing coming in. So what I'm going to do here, because this is on the default, um, is I'm actually going to pull this back just a little bit because it's a little bit much. There we go. I'm going to hit OK. And it just gave me a new layer for that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to, well, next thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to resize this. So since this is going to be a 19 by 20 image, then in that particular case, because it's currently 4, 4K, and take it down to 1920. And then we're going to see the real size. And this is when we sharpen. Okay. So this is the full size thumbnail now. And then we are going to go up to filter and then sharpen, unsharp mask. And then here we add detail back to it. And how this works in Photoshop is like, you can uh, just click on this up here and then it just kind of shows you the, the difference being made. And this one's, you have to be really careful here um, because with this, it's really easy to redo it. But this is where, you know, we bring like the, the beard back in and that kind of stuff. I'm gonna pull it back even more. Okay, so now that is nice and crisp. So now just to avoid any issues, I'm gonna duplicate it one more time. And then now we are going to uh, go up into the sharpen tool. Now with this one, um, this is also one to where I don't want it to be too crazy, but I'm going to just brush over my beard real quick, right? Cause that hair kind of stands out. I'm gonna tap on my eyes real quick. That should be good there. Yep, it just adds just a, I don't know if you can see this in the video, but it adds just a little bit of extra there. But um, here, I'm gonna pull up the vibrant scale again, and I'm just going to bump it up just a, just a little bit more. Again, you know, we're not trying to be too crazy, but I do want it to, you know, have good skin tones. So if you look at the difference between the two, when I toggle them on and off, it's a pretty extreme difference between the two. And just kind of helps them, you know, look better and pop and just everything, you know, just comes out looking more professional, makes me look better, you know, and all of that. It's pretty crazy what a difference that can make, right? You just leveled up your skill set. Nice work. If you want to see some of the other skills that you need to work on to help you thrive this year on YouTube, click into this video right here, right now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.